Hey, how's it going everyone? So I've been making a lot of lecture videos this, this past year because like many other instructors across the nation, uh, we've had to utilize the online space as a way to share information and to teach our students. So I've been making a lot of videos about physiology. I've been uh, teaching for the past year, uh, mainly physiology courses, uh, the sort of intro overview to physiology uh, for health and uh, human performance, and then also cardiopulmonary physiology. And as much as I love uh, physiology and research and, you know, sort of reading about the different ways the body functions, I have had this itch to make videos really more about the application of all this science, right? Because the reason I got into the field was to help people achieve their health and fitness goals. And as an instructor, what I want to do is make sure that I'm helping the next generation of health and fitness coaches and those that are going to be uh, helping people improve upon and, and reach their goals and, and their standing where they're at with their health and fitness. And so in order to do that, I really kind of want to start making videos about how a coach or, you know, a, a physiologist or whatever you want to call it, whatever your position is, uh, how you sort of develop this fitness programming and how you are going to help someone reach the goals that they set out for themselves and what assessments are you going to use in order to get there. So with this video today, what I want to do is sort of talk about from a general aspect, considerations for fitness programming, uh, things to keep in mind before you actually start making the program itself. Um, and then in future videos, what I hope to do is just talk more about specifics um, and how you really outline a fitness program and gear it towards uh, your specific client or patient and the goals that they have. And we'll also talk about different assessments that you can use in order to evaluate someone's cardiovascular endurance, their muscular strength, their muscular endurance, their balance, their flexibility, and things like that. Before I even get into the major considerations before developing a fitness program, let me talk about what a fitness program is. And that may seem redundant, but let me just explain it this way. A fitness program is a roadmap. Everyone's gonna have a starting level of fitness, a baseline level of fitness, and ultimately everyone is going to have a goal to where they, what they want to accomplish um, as far as health and fitness is concerned. And so what a fitness regimen hopes to do is to get this person from that starting level ultimately to their goal and the exercises reflected in that fitness program uh, should be working to help them achieve that goal. And so ultimately you will typically, you, you know, you're going to have a span of time you hope to accomplish this, this thing in, but you'll have checkpoints along the way to make sure that a program uh, is addressing the things that you want to address and that if you need to make changes to the specific exercise, you could go in and, and sort of do so. So I think this information is good, not only for, you know, trainers and coaches and those who, you know, help to to, to assist people reach their health and fitness goals, but just for everyone in particular, even if you're trying to develop your own fitness program, there are some major things to consider, including the goals uh, that you have, your starting level of fitness, your likes and dislikes when it comes to exercise and any limitations that you may have. And so it's important to also note that, you know, a fitness program shouldn't be the standard cookie cutter sort of thing. Um, it is very subjective and it's really going to depend on that particular client and what they are trying to achieve. Probably the most important part in developing a fitness program is the client's goals and what they want to accomplish. This is the whole reason why they have come to you and, and are coming to seek uh, a coach or a trainer's help, right? It's because they want to ultimately get to a specific goal. Now, most individuals walking into a gym or a fitness facility their most common goal when they seek out a personal trainer or a coach is to lose weight and look better. It is what it is. It's been that way for almost the entire time as we've had health and fitness coaches. People want to feel better about their appearance. They don't want to hold on to as much body fat. They want to lose weight, improve their body composition, and look better, right? And I'll talk about this more in the future, but really when it comes to those type of clients, it's it's more so about developing behavior, right? And it's more about getting them as physically active as their schedules allow and, you know, getting them on a consistent exercise regimen. But that regimen has to be geared and tailored towards them 
in order to ensure that they're going to keep up with that behavior and ultimately stick to this fitness program and ultimately then they can achieve their goals. However, there are going to be specific things that you could gear a workout regimen towards, whether that be muscular strength, muscular endurance, power, cardiovascular fitness, balance, um, or just improving some qualities of life, like health markers, like lowering blood pressure or lowering blood glucose. So depending on those goals that either your client develops or you develop, that program should really be geared towards those things. And particularly when it comes to athletes, you really have to evaluate these different aspects of fitness and you have to evaluate the sport they're in or the position that they play because the particular exercising exercises that they're doing at a point in time should reflect those goals of that sport and of their position, right? And NFL linemen's um, you know, training regimen is going to look a lot different than a woman's collegiate tennis player or let's say a 55-year-old mother who is training for a half marathon, right? So there's these different considerations that you have to go into as a client, as a coach, and, and, and really think about when you are generating that fitness program for someone. And it's important to note that, you know, as you pick that goal, how are you going to assess that progress, right? And that may be different depending on the client. So even if the person is trying to improve upon their strength, well, is it a sort of traditional maximal strength like you would assess in the bench press um, or, or a squat or a deadlift or something like that? Or is it more of a functional strength? Is it more of a sport specific strength? And so you have to find uh, proper assessments in order to see how the client is progressing. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in future videos about the different assessments you could use in order to track things like strength and cardiovascular fitness and flexibility and different things like that. The next important thing you have to consider is the client's starting fitness. Let's say I had two clients and both of their goal was to perform better in a 5k. Well, that may leave you to assume that the training would be the same for those two. But how about if the client letter A, let's say client A, has no experience whatsoever in running, right? Hasn't ran, let's say in 20 years, while client B is recreationally active, um, has some running experience, we'll, we'll do a run every once or twice a week, right? So there is a natural difference there that I have to consider when developing their program. And so you always have to look at a client's starting health and fitness. You have to consider their age, their current physical activity levels, their body composition, whether or not they have any diseases or signs or symptoms. Um, and you have to consider as a health and fitness coach, your liability and, and whether or not they need physical clearance before starting a fitness program. And then some of the other things we talked about, cardiovascular fitness, strength, endurance, uh, mobility or flexibility. Um, so, you know, you have to pick assessments to start before you even develop the fitness program to say, okay, this is where we are beginning. And in order to get the client to this specific goal in order to progress them, well, I have to know what their baseline level is and what is a realistic expectation as far as three months in, six months in, a year in. And so knowing and having good assessments and good uh, data as far as where they stand will help you develop that roadmap to where they want to go as far as fitness and health goals are concerned. The next important thing to consider is a client's likes and dislikes. Like I alluded to earlier, success in a fitness program really boils down to consistency and behavior. You need that client to come in, complete their workouts in order for them to stay on track. And if they're performing exercises or doing workouts that they don't like, Typically what happens is that they stop showing up and then they fail because they basically stop their fitness regimen. You have to remember that a lot of us coming into the field, we enjoy exercise. Uh, we enjoy trying new different workouts and different things, but not everyone shares that same enthusiasm. So a way to help as a coach or as a trainer is to give clients and patients sort of this variety and then narrow it down to what they like and dislike. That doesn't mean that you know, if you have a client that comes in and says, oh, I don't like running, that doesn't mean that you skip out on cardiovascular training, right? You could develop different things. 
you know, in order to supplement for that. So if they don't like running, you could try a stationary bike or you could try a rowing machine or swimming or different things like that. If they don't like a particular exercise, you could come up with things you know, to replace it, some alternatives, right? So when you're developing this fitness program, you know, you may want to start during your initial consultation just by flat out asking the client what they like and what they don't like. So you can, you know, either include those things in your program or avoid those things in your program. And then as you're going through the workouts with the client and as they're completing their own workouts, you could sort of tailor what they have and you could really pick the things that they are going to gravitate towards. So they are likely going to have more success in achieving their goals and completing their workouts. Now, it's important to note that even though you want the client to, of course, like what they're doing as far as workouts are concerned, that in order for someone to progress in health and fitness, they need to be pushed. And we call that progressive overload in exercise science, right? So you have to bump up the intensity or duration as the weeks and months and years go by. That's the only way that a person is going to progress in these different aspects of health and fitness. So even though you could come up uh, with exercises that you know, that the client enjoys, you still have to find ways in order to push them in order to make sure that they are keeping up with their program and that they're consistently moving forward and they just don't stay in the stagnate, you know, sort of place um, where, where they're not progressing on their health and fitness goals because they're just doing things that they like. So you also have to, as a coach, find a way to introduce things that are going to push them and that are going to help them progress um, in their fitness and in their health. The last thing you have to consider is the client's limitations. Things like age, disease, different conditions, their starting level of fitness, their injuries. Because ultimately the exercises and the workouts you give them, the intensity of them should be based on these different things. I think we know as, as we age, um, you know, our health starts to decline. Uh, we lose strength, we lose, uh, we gain more body fat, our metabolism slows down. And so you have to keep these things in mind when developing an exercise regimen. You can push a 21 year old a lot harder than you can a 60 year old, right? So, you know, not only just the exercises themselves, but the intensity and the way you set things up, um, as far as the fitness regimen is concerned, would be impacted by this. If they have certain diseases, if they have certain conditions, if the person's on blood pressure medicine, if they have a thyroid condition, they are going to respond differently from exercise. You know, and if they are sedentary or overweight or they have injuries, they're not going to be able to move the same way that a healthy individual will. So it's important with all these limitations to go low and slow. Start out with lower resistances, lower intensities, and build up upon it. It's a lot easier to increase uh, the difficulty of an exercise or increase the weight of an exercise really than to go back the other way. Because, you know, a lot of, a lot of people, if they get pushed too hard too quickly right off the bat, they're going to be a little bit reluctant sometimes to come back. They get a little bit scared. So it's, so it's sometimes better uh, to ease off a little bit right at the beginning and then sort of push them as they go. And so, you know, when you're developing your exercise regimen, things like that, you have to keep these things in mind. You know, a lot of our population is obese. They are sedentary. So if someone is just coming into the gym for the first time, you know, you're not going to throw them on 30 inch box jumps and wind sprints. That's just not a good, consistent, effective way uh, to have your clients starting out. You know, you want them to, to again, keep up with this behavior, to keep up with this regimen, um, to keep up, you know, with their physical activity. And a lot of coaches just like to push people and be hard asses and, you know, have them vomiting and, and, you know, dying on the floor after their workout. And I'm not saying there isn't a time and place for that. Of course there is. Uh, but most people are, again, they don't share that enthusiasm for exercise that maybe an athlete will. Um, or they're maybe a little bit scared to even be within a fitness facility or gym by itself. So the easier you can make it as a coach, as a trainer, in developing a fitness program that isn't threatening, but at the same time does help them progress. 
um, and little by little does push them, that is a more effective way and a better way um, of helping someone safely and effectively get to their goal. So today was more of a general overview of things that coaches and trainers should really consider when developing a fitness program. But in future videos, I really wanna get into more of the specifics of each of these aspects, uh, the type of exercises and workouts and rep and set schemes and rest schemes uh, that you should be doing if someone wants to improve uh, as a power lifter or if someone wants to improve a running race performance or a triathlete um, or if someone just wants to improve, you know, as an older adult, they want to get off their blood pressure medication, all the things that you should be thinking about when it comes to specific exercises, specific workouts, specific rest periods, things like that. So, you know, we'll talk uh, more in the future about assessments, different things that we could use in order to help um, check that our clients are progressing. And we'll talk more about different strategies when it comes to developing an actual fitness program. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you next video.